Good day, ladies and gentlemen. We are today focusing on the present value of an annuity. Very important to highlight the fact that it's with service fee or service charge added or with administration fee. We are now focusing on exercise 3.4 and exercise 3.4 has a statement that needs to be analyzed. Then after the statement is analyzed, then after we can answer the question that uh, follow uh, after the statement. It says study the statement below and answer the questions that follow. Note, very important to note the following, uh, that the interest rate increased from the 1st of April 2005. So in the statement that we will be analyzing below, we need to note the fact that interest went up from the beginning of the fourth month in the year 2005. It says the term is 180 months and not 240. That means we can just say the term is 140, is 180, but not 240. The reason why, obviously, most of the times uh, where we have a bond, a bond is for a period of 20 years, then 20 years times by 12 is normally 2040. So the biggest period of the repayment is normally 2040. So the fact that is 180, they're just highlighting that this is not a normal bond of 20 years, but uh, it's a normal bond of 15 years. Uh, because 15 times by 12, it gives us 180. But that is not something to worry about. <clears throat> The monthly administration fee stay fixed at 18 rand 20 cents. So we have monthly administration fee, which is the service charged or the service fee throughout the period. And there is no further interest rate increase after the 1st of April 2005. So there was only once off increase in the interest rate. And that main fee is 18 rand 20 cents. That must be added every month. Uh, work with i correct uh, to one decimal place that means our i being our interest must be corrected to one uh, decimal place <clears throat> meaning when we are rounding off our interest remember there uh, was information that said start the statement below and answer the questions that follow so before we answer the questions let us study the statement that is provided to us and this is statement number six. That means there were other statements uh, that uh, were there available. <clears throat> statement one, but now we are uh, somewhere along the side of the statement. Then statement number six, we have the account number, statement date 21st of July 2005. Then original term, meaning the period uh, of this loan, if it's a loan or bond, is over 120, 180 months. Then the remaining term is 147. Very important to highlight that if we have 180 minus 147, this means uh, 33 payments have been made already. <clears throat> we can highlight that 33 PMT have been made already. So 33 payments uh, have been made that means the remaining payments is 147 payments. Our statement has PMT number, meaning payment number, has a description, has <clears throat> effective date, and an amount, and a balance. And I want to highlight very importantly the balance and the total and the amount column. And also at the same time the dates <clears throat> and the further uh, descriptions. Now, take note of the fact that this is payment number 30, payment number 31, payment number 32, and uh, uh, payment number 33, uh, then going forward. So now we need to be uh, very uh, aware of uh, such number of payments. Now, uh, payment number 33 uh, is the last payment installment the payment number 33 that seems that i have forgotten to record it as the last payment for this statement so 
we have up to 33 payments which is aligned with the difference between 180 and 147 meaning 33 PMTs have been made. Then you'll also see why I'm saying 33 uh, was also made as a payment because there is the payment amount uh, being negative, there is another payment amount, there is another payment amount, <clears throat> and there is another payment amount. So these are the four payments uh, in this statement. I just forgot to write payment number 33. I'm just noting that one now. Yeah, apologies for that. Now we then go um, to analyze the opening balance and the payments that took place. And how do we do the recording here? <clears throat> we have an opening balance. Take note of that. On the 1st of February 2005. And the opening balance, it is an amount of 170,076 rand 71 cents. And we can see that there is monthly debit description that says monthly debit. This is can also be called interest. <clears throat> highlight that this can also be called interest <coughs> and interest is calculated from the opening balance that we have so now whatever interest rate which we don't know but we were told that at the beginning of the month of april there was increase in the interest rate but we don't know but we know that whatever balance we had at the beginning of february it was multiplied by the certain rate of interest then multiplied that by 1 over 12, then we got to this amount of the interest. So now, <clears throat> I just want to uh, caution you on that. Then after opening balance plus the interest amount plus service fees, it gives us the balance before the payment at the end of that month. So now I want to highlight that opening balance plus interest uh, plus service fees, which is administration fee, in this case called service fee of 18 rand 20 cents. That gives us the balance, which is the balance before the next payment took place. So the amount of 69,000 that is aligned with the payment, the installment monthly payment, is after the deduction of this payment has taken place. <clears throat> now, uh, let us just see how. Uh, these uh, numbers uh, are working out. Now, what does that mean? It means if we say the interest is calculated from the opening balance that we have, that means we say 170,076 rand uh, 71 cents. Uh, sorry, we say interest of 1,672 rand 42 cents divided by uh, 170,000 and 76 rand 71 cents then after we get interest per month why am i saying the interest is per month is because this interest amount is for one month which is the month of february calculated on the balance at the beginning of february so the interest of 0 0.98 is the interest for one month then we need to multiply it by 12 because you can see that these are monthly payments. These are the months. So uh, the interest is definitely compounded per month, although it's not clearly specified. <clears throat> we multiply by 12. We get our interest as 0 0.1179, and we multiply this by 100 uh, in order for us to get to our interest as 11.8%. So our interest is 11.8% per annum. And it is compounded monthly because we can see that there is monthly debit in the month of February, which is our interest. We also do have monthly debit in the month of March, which is the interest for the month of, of March. We also do have monthly debit in the month of April, which is the interest for the month of April. And we also do have monthly debit, which is the interest for the month of May. So now we can see that interest is added to the balance at the beginning of the period uh, every month, meaning now we can be very confident to say our interest is per annum compounded monthly. That is why we multiplied uh, that figure by 12, then after that by 100 in order to get the whole uh, uh, number of a percentage, but not in decimal. Now, 
let us uh, then go further and see what we're talking about. We said that uh, opening balance of 170,000 and 76 rand <clears throat> 71 cents plus 1,672.42. How much do we get? We get 171,749.13. So what we did, we just added interest from the balance at the beginning of the period. So after we have done that, then after we add the <clears throat> service fee, which is administration fees for the same month of uh, February, because every month we must add administration fee. Then after we say plus 18 rand 20 cents, then we see how much do we get 171,767.33 and we can see that this is the balance before <clears throat> the payment or before the 30th payment is made because this is the 30th payment so now in other words this is the balance before the 30th payment is made so now after we make the 30th payment therefore now this will be the balance after the 30th payment is made let us make the 30th payment and we we'll say minus 169 uh, 5 uh, sorry minus our payment monthly 2185.08 uh, then how much do we get we get 169582.25 so i want it to be very clear <clears throat> uh, with the calculation that uh, we are doing also be mindful of the fact that uh, included in the payment that we are making uh, already we have administration fee that has been taken into account now we also need to be uh, knowledgeable of the fact that uh, although every month we pay an amount of 2185 we need to know that this 2185 does not reduce <clears throat> our loan amount in total it's only one portion of the amount that does that and it might this might not be important now but uh, in future as you go further with financial accounting three and a particular level advanced diploma you will definitely need to know this now we are paying 2180 uh, 2185.08 we know that part of this payment is the interest that goes to the bank which does not reduce our loan but increases our loan so we say minus um uh, 167 uh, 1672.42 then after we also deduct our service phase then you say also minus 18 rand 20 cents so in other words from the balance that we have at the beginning in other words this is the only amount out of our payment that reduces uh, our loan balance at the beginning of the period that's why now if you say uh, the 170 0 76 .71, uh, minus 170 0 76 .71, uh, we get the 169 582.25 we get the balance after the uh, 30th payment has been made so very important to master that uh, you will see this very useful as you move to your third year in terms of separating the interest and the, the capital portion in other words, part of this amount is the interest and part of this amount is the uh, administration fee. So please have this at the back of your mind. Remember, this is our opening balance beginning of the period. And, and this interest and the administration fee are the ones that led to our balance increasing and our balance increasing. Meaning now out of the amount that we have made the payment, not all of that will reduce um the loan that we have but you'll see that further as you progress let me leave it at that level <clears throat> now again i want to come to the second month uh, or the second payment the 33rd payment remember now we have the closing balance this is the closing balance at the <clears throat> end of february take note of that this is the closing balance at the end of february which is the opening balance at the beginning of march take note of that also so this is the opening balance at the beginning of march that means now we take our closing balance at the end of february and we add interest and our interest remember it will be calculated 
from the balance that we have at the beginning of the month which is this is the balance we have at the beginning of march which is closing balance in february what does that mean that means this interest was calculated from the opening balance or the closing balance of the previous month meaning now if we also want to calculate interest for the same month of march it will definitely be the same as that 11.8 uh, percent but let us verify that one also <clears throat> It is uh, 166.7.56 divided by 169,582.25 equals we multiply this by uh, 12 equals we multiply this by 100 we get the same 11.8% per annum compounded monthly. I just want to prove to you that uh, the fact that the amount of the interest uh, in the month of February and the amount of the interest in the month of March does not mean that the interest rate has changed. Please be more mindful of that. In other words, we said in this closing balance, which is the closing balance uh, that I'm talking about, in, in other words, we say in this closing balance of 169,000, uh, we would have said <coughs> 169,000, 582.25 times by 0 0.118 equals uh, times by 1 over 12. Then this will give us this 166.56. Uh, so that is why now the interest uh, rate remains the same, although the interest amount is changing because it is based on the balance we have at the beginning of the current month or at the end of the previous month now remember this is part of analyzing and starting the statement that is alongside uh, before we can attempt to respond to the question now let us look at in the in the fourth month remember the fourth month is the month of april where we were told that the interest rate increased by a specific percentage which we don't know so now we need to know how much now is the interest rate in the uh, month um, of April? Let us see the month of April, which is the fourth month, the fourth month, and the fourth month. Now, obviously, we do have our monthly debit. Remember, our monthly debit is the interest. Remember, it is the interest. Now, let us calculate our interest rate uh, using the interest amount based on the balance at the beginning of the current period which is balance at the end of the previous month become the opening balance at the beginning of the fourth month in which our interest uh, uh, our interest amount will be calculated so now let us calculate now the interest rate um, for the fourth month if how much is the interest rate which we know the amount of the interest is 1747.19 then you say 1747.19 divided by 169,082.93. Then we get 0 point, which is interest per month. We multiply it by 12. We get interest for the full year, but we need to multiply by 100 in order for us to get the interest rate now for uh in a full number which is 12.4 percent we're instructed to round off our interest to one decimal please please forget not that so now we are very clear that our interest in the month of april has increased now let us look at this also intensively now we know that <clears throat> we could see that our premiums meaning our monthly premiums that we are paying every month which include administration fee, which include the interest rate. They were 2,185 in the month of February. And again, our monthly uh, payments, uh, which is our premium, was uh, the same in the following month. But now after there was increase in the interest in the fourth month, our PMT increased to 2,247 and 2,247 around 20 cents for both of the month obviously continuously assuming all other things remain constant now now that we have tested in the month of april that our interest rate is um 12.4 percent 
let us also test in the month of uh, may remember now the interest here is also uh, the 12.4 percent let us test it that or oh, let us let us test this one remember we said our i is equal to 12.4 percent i want to prove this 1742 now from the closing balance of the previous month how was it calculated they said a uh, previous month closing balance it is 168,601.12 uh, uh, divide i don't know why i'm doing this all the time okay that's fine yes they said 168,601.12 times by 0 0.124 remember this is the rounded off of uh, 0 0.124 which is the 12.4% time by 0 0.124 then uh, we say times by 1 over 12 because we only need to know how much is the interest for uh, the month of April only for one month hence we say 1 over 12 do you see that we get 1742.21 exactly the same interest amount so they say the closing balance of the previous month turned by the interest rate uh, which is the increased interest rate to get to the uh, interest which is monthly debit for the month of April. So now this is very simple like that. And again, in order for them to calculate this interest of 12.4%, obviously if we say 1,742.21 um, uh, divide by closing balance of the previous month, which is opening balance of the current month, 169.601.12, equals times by 12 then we times this by 100 we get the same 12.3 which will be 12.4 i don't know what uh, mistake i've done um it is 1742.21 divided by 168601.12 just want to make sure that we have exactly the same figure times by 12 equals uh, times by 100. Yes, we get 12.4 percent. We must have missed one rounding off. So the interest is 12 percent throughout now uh, from now going forward. This is guys how the statement is to be analyzed and interpreted before you start responding to the questions. I know it might have taken some couple of minutes and you can see there is the last payment payment number 33 that i forgot to type and apologized for that now we know the overview of what is happening in the statement we know what is what we know what is not what and we must be very clear that and again this amount of the payment <clears throat> include interest and it include uh, administration fee and this amount also include administration fee and this amount include administration fee now that is why i want you to highlight that uh, that administration fee it is included that is why now um i've analyzed everything for you so that you get the full understanding very important to note the fact that um the pmt include admin fee the pmt include admin fee which is the monthly installment it includes the administration fee so <clears throat> let us now go and respond to the questions uh, that uh, follow the statement the question that follow the statement let's read them as they give them to us the first question says uh, what amount was originally borrowed we need to know how much was originally borrowed in other words what are we looking for we are looking for the present value of an annuity and i want to highlight this once again remember up until uh, the end of april meaning up and so up until the end of march because the interest ended up to the end of march so up until the end of march we had what you call an annuity up until the end of march we had an annuity remember the definition of an annuity says an annuity is a series of equal payments uh, made at regular intervals of time at the same rate of interest so the minute now there was change in interest rate at the beginning of the fourth month that means we have to stop the old annuity then after we begin the new annuity so now here we have another annuity that continues here we have an annuity that ended so please be mindful of that i will always be highlighting that 
uh, whenever it's necessary as I respond to the questions. So now our present value has to be based on the first annuity before the interest rate uh, changed because the loan was borrowed and it was agreed that 2,185.8 cents must be uh, paid every month. And I said to you that this 2,185 include administration figures. I want to highlight that. And as we want to say, what do I mean is included? Remember, I said the balance at the beginning of the period, uh, which is this balance. Let me just take an amount in the middle. This is the balance at the end of February, meaning balance after February payment was made. So now the balance at the end of February becomes the opening balance at the uh, beginning of March. So now we say this is the closing balance end of February, which is beginning balance at the beginning of uh, March. Now I want to erase this amount. I don't want to have it in the picture so that you can understand what I'm saying. And I also want to erase this amount so that I don't have this amount in the picture. In other words, every remember at the end of the month, we don't pay this at the end of the month. We don't see this visibly, but we do pay it. I want to say that we, we, we don't pay this separately. We don't pay this separately. What we pay is only one amount. But you'll be wondering, but why now if we pay this amount, we have 169,000? That's what I want to bring to your attention now. I don't want to show this balance and I don't want to show this balance. What I want to explain to you is the fact that administration fee is included here and uh, interest which is the interest is also included in the amount that we are paying so the amount that we are paying in other words which is the amount of 2185 rand 8 cents does not reduce the balance we have at the beginning no part of it is the interest that goes to the bank which does not reduce our loan and part of it is the administration fee which does not reduce our loan now let me prove that to you we have an amount of 2,185 rand uh, 8 cents and I want to deduct uh, uh, for you 18 rand uh, 20 cents and deduct the interest of 1,667 rand uh, 56 cents. So now how much amount do I have? The amount that I have it is uh, 499 rand uh, 32 cents. This is the only amount that reduces your loan. Out of this whole payment, the only amount that reduces your loan is only 499 rand. Now, how do I prove that to you? Let's see the closing balance of February. <clears throat> closing balance of February, which is opening balance of March, is how much is 169. And if we say 169,582 rand uh, 25 cents, and we say minus 499.32, you'll see exactly how much is our loan decreasing. It's decreasing only by 499 in order for it to get to 169 rand uh, 82 cents point 90 um, uh, 90 i don't know why there's there's only 90 but it should be 93 just verify that again we have 169,582.25 minus uh, 499.32 uh, sorry point 0.32 this goes to 5 okay i see now 169.582 Point twenty five minus four nine nine point three two. So that is where that ninety three hours just press the different number when the calculator is opening up the space. So we can see that our loan balance decreases with a small amount. Although we pay two thousand one eighty five, but it decreases with a small amount because included in the monthly payment on any loan, guys, is divided into three. There's first leg, the second leg, and there's a third leg. The first leg is the uh, interest, which we can see that the interest is taking too much portion out of how much we pay. Out of 2,185 is the interest, which is the revenue to the bank. S second portion is the uh, fees, which is administration fee, which we have seen that administration fee is a fixed uh, constant amount of 18.20 cents. Then the last portion is 499.32 is the one now which is our capital portion is the amount that reduces our loan now guys i've spent so much time analyzing this because it is very important to master how the statement work now <clears throat> let me then now respond to the question we are required to calculate the 
original amount that was borrowed, which is based on the monthly debits of 2,185 rand 8 cents. Remember, uh, the loan that we borrowed did not include the administration fee. They gave us cash, which did not have administration fee. So now when we're calculating our present value, meaning amount that was borrowed, we need to say this is our PMT, but we need to minus administration fee, which is 18 and 20 cents, because administration fee are only incurred to maintain the loan or to administer the loan throughout the period of the loan. <coughs> so, in other words, we have to say uh, plus minus uh, 2,000, um, uh, 2,000, how much is the 2,185? 2,185 rand 8 cents. 2,185 rand 8 cents minus 18 rand 20 cents. We are deducting the administration fee. Then after this will be our monthly debit, PMT. We know that our interest is equal to 11.8%. I want to calculate uh, this interest first on the sideline, although we did calculate it first. I want to calculate this interest on the sideline. Very important to uh, know how this interest is calculated. Our interest, we said it will be uh, from the interest amount. Uh, we said it will be the interest amount of 1672.42. Uh, interest is equal to 1672.42 divided by 1672.42 divided by the balance of 170,076.71, if I'm not mistaken. 0.71. Uh, 76.71 then after we said whatever answer we get must be multiplied by 12 and multiplied by 100 and we got the interest before there was increase as equal 11.8% if you remember that 11.8% per annum compounded monthly don't forget that so I just want to bring this interest so that you know where is it coming from so we have 11.8 divided by 12. Our N is how long? Remember, N is the total period. We borrowed an amount where uh, 2,185 after we've deducted the premium will give us uh, the monthly premiums. So we compute <clears throat> present value. We know how much we're paying and we know how long. So we need to know how much or how much of the present value. Now, I'll just be using my financial calculator, not the app one. We have 2000, or let me say plus minus 2185.08 minus 18 rand 20 cents. Don't forget, minus 18 rand 20 cents. Then after we say PMT, 2185.08 minus 18.20. Uh, this is our. PMT. Please don't forget that, meaning we have to say 2185.08 uh, minus 18 rand 20 cents, we get 2166 uh, rand 88 cents. This is our PMT. Then we have 11.8 divided by 12 is our interest, 180 is our N. Then we compute the present value. Our present value, it is 182,500.0581. Obviously, this is rounded off to 182,500. This definitely is because of the rounding off when it comes to uh, interest. So, in other words, the amount that was borrowed was 185,200 rands. Then we go to the second question. After the statement has been analyzed thoroughly. Number two says, what was the percentage increase in the interest rate? We have already calculated the percentage increase. And now we are doing number two. Uh, interest, uh, it was... Uh, uh, the interest amount, we know that it went up in the month of uh, April. 
so we go in the month of april we look for the monthly debit which is our interest amount divided by the balance of the previous month meaning balance at the end of the month of march which is 169000 then we say 1747.19 1747.19 divide by the balance of the previous month 169082 169082 point look for the decimal point 93 we say point 93 then whatever we get we multiply by 12 and multiply it by 100 in order to the get to the full interest uh, uh, rate seventeen forty seven point nineteen divide by one sixty nine zero eighty two point ninety three <clears throat> equals times by twelve equals times by hundred we get twelve point four percent per annum and we are very confident to say it is compounded on a monthly basis so because we are very clear with this then uh, we have responded to question number two now the next question will definitely be a third question so now we have calculated the interest remember there was increase in the interest rate from the first of april 2005 that is why we take into account the month of april 2005 then now let us look at the uh, third question we are required to compute the interest charged at the end of november 2005 this is very important to master this question guys uh, but there are hidden uh, dynamics that need to be uh, well understood in such type of question remember we are required to compute the interest rate at the end of uh, november 2005 uh, where are we in the statement first of all in the statement we are at the end of the month of april meaning there will be uh, may um, or oh, this this is may there will be june uh, there will be july there will be august there will be september there will be october there will be november this is where we are focusing that means we need to know the balance at the end of october take note we need to know the balance at the end of october so that we can add interest why are we doing that remember in our statement this is um the balance i want to look at the balance at the end of the period this is the balance at the end of uh, february how did you calculate the interest we can see that monthly debit is the interest this is the interest for which month for the month of march but this interest was based on the balance at the end of the previous month how that was done remember we said uh, balance at the end of the previous month which is balance at the end of the previous month being february we multiplied this by uh, 12.4 and we multiply this by 1 over 12 in order for us to get to the interest of the uh, following month so now let me also test this to you uh, no this is not uh, sorry for this uh, just a minor correction remember the interest is 11.8 at this point in time it is 11.8 percent uh, percent times by 1 over 12 remember the interest rate increased to 12.4 percent in this month of april so that will only be applicable in the month uh, of april so now because i'm looking it before the interest uh, was increased but it doesn't matter which time do i choose so now we have the closing balance there closing balance at the end of february we want to know the interest for which month for the month of march there is the interest for the month of march how was it calculated we said remember we said 169,000 balance of february five um 169,582 uh, 0.25 times by 0 0.18 which was 11.8 percent 0.11 uh 0 0.118 times by one month out of 12 months how much do we get we get 166 7.56 you can see exactly so now 
again let me prove when there was increase in the interest rate let me take the last month the 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 the, the, the last month which is the month of may we have the interest amount which is monthly debit monthly debit is the interest remember i said to you the interest of the current month which is the month of may is based on the closing balance of the previous month so now we know that our interest now it is 12.4 uh, percent we know our interest rate it has increased already at the beginning of the month of april now we take the balance at the end of the previous month which is balance at the end of um uh, april uh how much the balance 160 8610 rand uh, 12 cents times by 0 0.124 remember this is already rounded off 0 0.124 which is 12.4 percent times by one month out of 12 months because we only need it for one month how much do we get 1742.21 so guys this is what i want to bring to your attention uh, analyzing the statement again in alignment with the uh, third requirement where we are required to compute the interest charged at the end of the month of november 2005 in other words, now we need to use the function called amort. We need to say amort, meaning remember amort will help us to calculate the balance after a certain payment was made. We need to say amort uh, October so that we get the balance after October payment was made. But you need to be very mindful of the fact that now when we say amort October, we have a new annuity. The new annuity, when did this new annuity start? The new annuity started um, at the month of April. So April become the first month. It will be April. Um, uh, it will be April. Uh, it will be May. After that, it will be April, May, June, July. So we have April payment. It will be May. It will be June, uh, July, August, September, October. In other words, April become the first month, um, May become the second month, uh, June become the third month, fourth month, fifth month, sixth month, seventh month in the new annuity because whenever there is a change in the interest rate, there will be a new annuity. So now we're no longer going to be saying 33, 34, 35, 36, no, 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 because there's a new annuity whenever there was change in the interest rate. And the definition of an annuity says an annuity is a series of equal payments that are made uh, um, at a regular time interval at the same rate of interest. When the interest rate changes, then the old annuity will stop, then a new annuity will start. And the new annuity started in April. So it will be April, May, June, July, August, September, October, um, uh, October, which is seven months. We need a balance after October payment was made so that it becomes opening balance of November and we calculate the interest uh, for that period. Now, you definitely know that for you to calculate a mod, you first need to uh, have uh, the present value or the, the, the period in your calculation. So now what are we going to do now in this scenario? In this scenario now, we have to now calculate our PMT which we already know that our PMT is 242.47, but we just need to punch it in our calculators. So now, uh, how that is going to happen, we need to look at our latest balance before there was a change in the interest. Our latest balance before there was change in the interest rate was 169.082. This was our balance before the month of april this was balanced at the end of march before there was change in the interest rate so this is our present value our new present value then now both there is a change in our uh, 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 interest rate and also our pmt this is our present value and our period will be how long remember we have made 31 payments so now it will be the difference uh, between uh, those payments it will be 180 minus 31 this will be our n <clears throat> let us just verify that it will be 180 minus 31 that means it will be 149 is our n and we know that our interest is equal to 12.4 percent then what are we calculating we're calculating our pmt then our pmt is without interest with 
is without admin fee then you say plus 18.20 so now let us do that in our calculation so that when we say how much we have all the function that we need uh, in our calculator then we say now plus minus uh, 110 we say the closing balance is 169,082.93 uh, 169,082.93 is our present value present value in the new annuity the amount we started with in the new annuity when the interest rate changed to 12.4% divide by 12 because it's compounded monthly then we have 180 minus 31 because 31 payments were made at the old interest rate because this payment of 31 was made at the old interest rate of 11.8 percent now from the month of may also for the month of april 2005 the interest rate changed then we have a new annuity that starts with the present value of 169,000, which is the closing uh, value of the previous uh, period or balance of the previous period then now what are we calculating we are saying compute uh, compute pmt then whatever pmt we get we need to say plus 18 rand 20 cents now we are adding our pm our our administration fee and i hope you are very clear because previously when we calculated the present value remember when we calculated the present value we removed the administration fee so now when we're calculating we removed the administration fee from the pmt now when we're calculating pmt we need to say plus the administration fee after so that it gets to be added now let me go to the calculator once again and we say 169,082.93 cents is my present value 12.4 divided by 12 is my interest 110 um I said it's 149. Uh, let me just verify that is 149. Yes, 149, which is 180 minus 31. So it's 149 is my N. Then I say compute uh, PMT. My PMT before the addition of the um, before the addition of the admin fee is equal to 2228 rand. 99 obviously this is 229 so now what i do i don't touch my calculator remember i said now compute pmt i get this amount immediately i say plus in my screen plus 18 rand 20 cents equals don't play anything plus 18 rand 20 cents how much do i get i get 2247.20 cents in other words you say plus minus pmt you punch interest you punch n you say compute pmt then you get this amount then after you say plus 1820 then it will say pmt plus 1820 equals 2247 cents now this pmt should be the same pmt in the new repayment period they're exactly the same pmt after we added our admin fee we get the same PMT, meaning this PMT without admin fee is 2,220 uh, 20, uh, 20 something that we've calculated, 229. That is the PMT without the administration fee. But we need it with the admin fee so that it becomes this PMT. Now, don't clear your screen, remember. Why we don't clear our screen is because we want to calculate the balance after the seventh payment in the new annuity has been paid after the seventh payment in the new annuity has been paid remember the new annuity started in the month of uh, um, april in the month of april when there was a change in the interest rate so from april april up until october is how many months it will be april may june july august september october so now is seven month is equal to seven month that means if I say I'm not seven, I will get the balance after the seventh payment was made, meaning a closing balance at the end of October, which I will calculate interest for the month of November. So now, after this, we just say I'm not, I'm not seven equals.
then you press a mod you scroll down it says p2 you punch 7 and you say enter you scroll down you get that balance of 162692 cents this is balance at the end of october a mod 7 is balance end of october balance at end of october and october is the seventh payment in the new annuity so now remember this is the balance after the uh, october payment was made also take note of that so now what do we need to calculate we need to calculate the interest for november and interest for november is based on the closing balance at the end of october so the interest for november will be 165,603.92 times by 0.124 interest is 12.4 percent remember times by one month out of the 12 month so now let us see how much are we going to get don't clear your calculator please remember that uh, you can just continue with your calculations but without clearing the calculator because the calculator still has the memory in the screen <clears throat> 165603.92 times by 0 0.124 times by 1 over 12 it will give us the interest of 1711.24 so this is the interest that was charged only for the month of November, which is based on the balance of the previous month, meaning opening balance of the current month is obviously the closing balance of the previous month. Hence, we said a mod, uh, meaning calculate, calculator, calculate the balance after the payment of October was done. So we have made ourselves very clear in terms of this one. Let us now. Uh, look at uh, the next uh, requirement, which should be requirement number four, if my memory still serves me very well. We're still going to requirement number seven, but don't worry, uh, I've explained everything now, and these questions will not be much uh, requiring of my explanation. Number four is divided into two. Number four uh, says that we are to calculate uh, first it says the loan was paid in full in December 2005. That's very lovely. So what was the payment amount? So in other words, what does this question require us? We need to calculate the balance when the December payment was due. If you remember the previous uh, questions on Amot, we need to know the balance before the December payment was done. So in other words, we can say a mod December. Let me just use that term. We can say a mod December. Remember, December is a specific number. December, if it's October 7, November will be 8. Then December uh, will be 9. So we can say a mod 9. If we say a mod 9, we'll get a balance after the 9th December payment is made. Then we add it back, we get to the balance before the December payment was made, meaning how much is the balance when the December payment was due. So that's what you need to know, the balance before the December payment was made, so that you can know how much was the payment made in order to settle the account when the December payment was due, of which December is the ninth payment in the new period or in the new annuity because October is 7, then November is 8, December will be definitely 9. So now let us go in that approach. Remember there are two ways always to calculate these uh, types of questions. Now let us uh, remember my calculator is not clear. It's not cleared. I will just say now a uh, mod or if you have unfortunately cleared your calculator, I also want to highlight uh, uh, that dimension. If you happen to have cleared your calculator, then you'll need to go and recalculate the PMT. 
you need to go back and compute this PMT. Then after you compute the PMT, you say plus 18 rand 20 cents. Then so that your PMT is equal to 2,247 rand 20 cents. Then with that now, you can come and just say AMRT is equal to 9. Or so not equal to 9. Amort 9. That means you want to know the balance after the ninth payment was made which is after the December payment was made. So for me, I'll go back and scroll up. It says P7, then instead it says P2 equals 7. Then I'll just say 9 and say enter and scroll down. Now, after I said uh, amort, in other words, amort P, P9, I get a balance of 164,563 rent uh, zero six cents now what do i need to do i just need to add back the december payment how much the december payment it is two thousand two hundred and forty seven where do i get that remember we know that in the new period our monthly payments two thousand two forty seven rand twenty cents two forty seven rand twenty cents so now we will be doing that and with do that simple like that 164,563.06 plus 2,247.20. This will give us the balance before the ninth payment was made, meaning before December payment was made, meaning when the ninth payment was due, meaning when December payment was due. Meaning, this will give us the balance, in other words, uh, uh, at the end of December, before the payment of December took place. Because we deducted December payment, then after we added it back, then it gave us the balance. Now, remember, this is the balance that this person would have circled or would have paid in order to circle by the end of December. This is one way to calculate this question. Remember, there's always two ways in this one. We can say now in the other one, uh, AMRT amort 8 now for me I did not clear my screen as usual I'll just scroll up now where it says amort P2 equals 9 I say 8 then I say enter and I scroll down now when I do that I will get uh, my balance after the 8th payment was made meaning after November payment was made then I will I get 110 65,086 rent uh, 17 cents. This is the balance end November. This is balance and November. Balance and November. Remember, this was balance end of December. This one was balance end of December beginning of January but we added uh, it was balanced after December payment was made so now in this case what do I do I say this is my balance at the end of November which is beginning of December in other words let me just change it because closing balance becomes opening balance this is balance beginning of December beginning of December which is opening balance or closing balance of the previous month so what do we need to do? We need to add the interest. Then after we add the, don't forget, the admin fee, 18 rand 20 cents. That's exactly what we have analyzed in the statement. If you remember, we said in the statement, uh, I don't want the opening balance, I want the closing balance. Just want to take the closing balance, not the opening balance. Now, we go there and we analyze look at the previous month payment yes this is the one this is the closing balance at the end of uh, april how did we get to the balance before meaning how do you get to this balance because this is the balance before the next payment we said plus monthly debit interest we said plus administration fee in order to get to the balance before the next payment is made and again, this is also the balance before the next payment is made. 
this is the balance after the payment uh, of the month of April was made. So that means the balance of the uh, previous month, meaning this balance again, this balance uh, after payment of March was made. What did we do in this balance? We added interest, we added admin fee, it gave us the balance before the payment of the next month was made. So now we need to add interest and after we add the administration fee. So now let us say how much will be our interest amount. Interest amount is the opening balance or closing balance of the previous month 165086.17 times by 0 0.124 times by 1 over 1 over 12. So this will give us the interest. Let us check that uh, we have 165,086.17 times by 0 0.124 times by 1 over 12 because we're only looking for it for one month. Interest is 1,705.89 cents. Then now uh, we take that interest to we'll say 160, no, 165,086.17 plus 1705.89 plus 1820 cents of the administration fee then how much do we get we get to the balance at the end of December 166826 cents which is exactly the same as the one that we did previously my point is that whichever way you do it for me it matters nothing as long you get the correct answer at the end of the day but it's good to have all the flavors so that you choose the one that is best for you office students normally choose that but you also need to know this because sometimes you can be required to calculate the interest for december remember this is the interest for december only so when you're required to do this you need to amort a month before then you calculate the interest so it's very good to master both of this approach so that you grab all the marks uh, that are necessary now, in fact, all the marks are always necessary to grab. Now, we complete the second part. Compute the total amount paid in interest charges, excluding administration fee. We need to know how much this person has been charged in terms of the interest for the entire period. Please be mindful of the fact that <clears throat> this person made 31 payments, paying this amount, and we know this amount includes administration fee. So we need to minus the 18 rand 20 cents. Then after we multiply this by 31, it will give us the total payments. Then now at the same time, this person is going to make other payments. The payments of how much? 2,247 monthly um, uh, payments. And how many is going to make? 10149 if you remember. Where that 141 come, 149 coming from? We said 180 minus 31 payments. So it's going to make 10149 payments. Um, of of this uh, uh, 2,247 but the requirement is requiring us to calculate how much interest was charged up until when up until December only take note of that remember this person now is making a settlement by December so we're not taking into account all the 149 but to take all the 31 uh, plus the nine uh, months which is from the month of April when there was change in the interest up until the month of December, which is nine. So now, what does this mean? It means now this person is going to make payments uh, of is going to make payments of two thousand two hundred and forty with deduct administration fee eighteen hundred and twenty for how long? For nine months. Therefore, now we already know how much is the balance that he will be owing by the end of December, and now that is the balance that is going to be circling and we know that the balance that is owing by the end of December is the one that we calculated and that balance is how much it is 166,810 and we're very clear that this balance include administration fee remember I added it there but you cannot easily see in here but we can easily see again because we know included in this premium there is 1820 cents so now if it says we must calculate the interest excluding administration fee we need to minus administration fee in there so or either we minus it here or we minus it in here or we minus it in there at the end of the day we are deducting it
So this is um, 4.2. Uh, this is 4.2 that we're doing. 4.1 is done. So now, how are we going to calculate the interest? We need to say now, uh, the interest that this person is, has charged up until December will be the payments of 2,185 rand, 8 cents, minus 18 rand, 20 cents. Then after there's another amount that this gentleman paid over this loan, uh, which is a total of 2,000. 247 rand 20 cents and we need to deduct the administration fee because we know that it is inside there and uh, I'm just forgetting to multiply this this was done for 31 months plus uh, 2247 rand 20 cents minus 18 rand 20 cents we multiply this by 9 months which is April up until um uh, uh november april up until uh the november uh, payment because this person uh went up to the month uh, of uh, november making all these payments which is nine months uh, up to december because it's settled in december so by the end of december i would have already um paid the administration fee so we say terms by nine then after we then now calculate uh, the rest uh, of them or add the rest of the balance of which the rest of the balance is the balance end of December which is 166,826 cents and this will be deducted from the uh, uh, 1820 cents of the administration fee then we know how much he borrowed this is total he paid first 31 months second total he paid for the remaining period then after he, there was a balance that was left which that balance included administration fee then now we need to say he borrowed 182,500 the difference will give us the amount of interest that was charged over the period and that interest is a total of 71,000 526 rand uh, 34 cents now that is the interest that this person has been charged over the period after paying uh, the sum here and after paying uh, the sum here and the remainder was 166810 so now that is the reason uh, we make uh, this uh, calculation in this manner now uh, with that being said we then now can continue uh, with the and next calculation and this was 4.2 what were we calculating in 4.2 we were just calculating the amount um, that was charged in terms of the interest excluding the administration fee so we took all the premiums plus the amount that is settled which already included interest and admin fee also now we come to uh, to the next question we come to the next question the next question says the lender made a lump sum payment of 60000 the lender made a lump sum payment of 60000 rands into an account on the 1st of november how many more payments remain we need to calculate the number of payments that are still left how many more payments that are remaining in the account then after what is the amount of the last payment there is an h that i uh, incidentally forget uh, typing error what is the amount of the last payment now we continue on that same note again now we say the lump sum of 60000 is paid when uh, on the 1st of november meaning now we need to know the balance uh, after the payment of november remember we know that november is the uh, uh, november is the definitely we calculated that is april may june july august september october so now meaning we need to amort seven we need to amort seven amort seven which is april may june july august september october meaning we'll get a balance at the end of october which is the balance at the beginning of november now remember my calculator uh, is still not cleared. I did not clear it at all. 
so now i can just go to my amount if you cleared your calculator you then now need to do the recalculation of the pmt we need to do the recalculation of the pmt there's a likelihood that maybe you have uh, uh, forgotten to do that so now <clears throat> it will be plus minus hundred and sixty nine thousand and eighty two and ninety three cents if you remember this was our pv our interest is still 12.4 percent 12.4 divided by 12 our n is 149 and we compute our pmt plus 18.20 cents it will give us pmt equals 2247.20 cents this is what we calculated before in other words you just do this recalculation then you say plus 820 cents in your pmt then after i said plus 820 cents then after now we can say amount amount remember we said we are moting october and october is the seventh month it is april may june july august september october that means we'll get a balance after the october payment was made which becomes opening balance of november under amount we scroll down we go to uh, a p2 it says uh, p2 is quite on my calculator two then we say seven and we say enter we scroll down now after we set a mod we get hundred and sixty five thousand cents this is the balance after the payment uh, of october was done and when did you make the lump sum of payment we need to be cognizant of that the lump sum payment took place at the beginning of november meaning just after the payment of october was done so we know how much the balance after october was done and we made a lump sum so now we need to know the next question that says um what was the uh or how many payments remains how many payments remains now we need to say we do have our balance after october payment was made and we need to say minus sixty thousand rands this will give us the balance after uh, the october payment was made so now in other words it will be hundred and sixty five thousand six hundred and three rand ninety two cents minus sixty thousand rands how much do we get we get hundred and five thousand six hundred ten three and ninety two cents so now this is our new balance or our new present value then what are we required to calculate the number of the payments that remain how many pay more payments remain that means now this person um wants to pay the same amount remember currently how much is he paying every month this amount this is what he's paying every month so now we need to calculate how many payments remain if that is uh, the amount that he wants uh, to pay now remember we need to exclude always our uh, administration fee when we're calculating the number of payments then now it will be plus minus hundred and five thousand six oh three uh, point 0.92 is our present value our interest has not changed it's still 12.4 percent our n um obviously how many were looking for n then what else our pmt then this is our pmt now just want to go straight to our pmt our pmt i did not write the pmt oh lord but that's not a problem our pmt is 2210 47 rand 20 cents minus 18 rand 20 cents so this will be our pmt what are we looking for we are looking for n how many payments therefore remains so now we definitely have to clear our screens now second function alpha zero zero hundred and five thousand six oh three point ninety two uh, is my present value plus minus present value then we have 
2247.20 minus 18.20 is my PMT. 12.4, 12.4 divided by 12 is my interest. I'm sure some of you are like, when are you putting the divide by 12? Then uh, that will be uh, giving us uh, the number of uh, payments that are still left. The number of payments that are still left. And then we have had gain 105,603.92 is our present value. 12.4 divided by 12 is our interest. 2,247.20 minus 18 Point twenty is my PMT. Then what are we looking for? We are looking for our N. Our N is 65. Uh, point 41, 55, uh, 4, 8. Meaning now our N in simple terms is equal to 66 uh, months that are left. Now we have 66 months that are left. Let us then now uh, listen to the next question. Please don't clear your calculator because this question are very much continuous. Don't clear your calculator. Now it further says compute. Uh, we are done with the computing of the interest. What was the last amount of the payment? What is the amount of the last payment remember how many payments remains 66 now i want to highlight something that i've said before again to you in other words there are 65 payments of uh, 2247.20 or 65 payments that would be 65 full payments obviously uh, that will be already taken into account because we is always included when we make the payments the payment include the amount so now there will be 65 payments that are full. The last payment will be small. In other words, our calculator knows 65 point something. We can now say amount 65, meaning the balance after the 65th payment was done. We say now uh, amount uh, under P1 will go down. P2, payment number 2, we say 65 and say enter. And we scroll down. Now, after the 65th payment, we have 94 cents, which is the balance after the 50, 65th payment was made. Then what we need to do is to add interest and to add administration fee of 1820 cents as usual to get to the balance. Uh, uh, to get to the balance uh, before the 66th payment was made. So let's calculate our interest amount. And we know that our interest is based on the balance of the previous month, which is 919.54 times 0 0.124 times by 1 over 12. And see how much is our interest. Then we say 91 or 919.54 times by 0 0.124 times by 1 over 12. How much is our interest? Our interest is 950. Very small amount. 950 cents. So we're just adding here 950 cents. We add admin fee 18.20 plus 919 0.54 and we get to 947.24 cents. So this is the last payment. How much is um, the last installment amount? That is 947.24. Now, if you've been watching the other video that I've done, you'll be mastering this now very well. Uh, now we go to number six, and the last one is number seven. So we are already approaching the end now. Already approaching the end. Very wonderful question to master. 
the lender missed the payment number 40 to payment number 45. There is some missments sometimes missing. What do the payments increase to? Starting at the end of payment number 46. The loan is settled over the agreed term. In other words, we need to know the balance. Uh, the, uh, the balance of payment number 40. Remember now, we made 31 payments in the old annuity. Then, but payments numbers don't stop. Now, from payment number 32 up to payment number 39, we did make payments, but we only missed it. Only missed the 40th to the 45th. We need now to know the balance uh, before the 40th payment was made, which is uh, from the 200 to 32, 33, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. Meaning, eight payments were made in the new payments, but the ninth one was missed, which is the 40th one. So now that is where now the amount functionality will then need to be used. We need to use the amount button in order for us to be able to calculate. Now we need to say amount. And it will be amount. It's 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. Meaning it will be amount 9. Amount 9, A-M-R-T 9. Meaning it is the ninth payment in the new annuity. But it is the 40th payment. So 40th payment will be 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. Remember, 40 was missed. So now we made how many payments? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we need to know the balance after the 8th payment was made, which is payment number 40 in total, but is the 8th payment in the new annuity. Take note of that, guys. Uh, so now we'll have to say, a mod uh, 8. I don't know why I said 9. We say a mod 8 because it's the 8th payment which is payment number 40 uh, continuing from uh, the old annuity. So now remember again your calculator in the screen must have the payment which is PMT uh, of 2247.40. So now that means we need to recalculate this PMT so that we begin with this PMT. Plus, minus, once again, plus, minus, 169,000, uh, 0, 0.82, if you remember that, 0. 0.93 is my present value. Interest is, this is the balance uh, at the beginning of the change in the interest rate. Interest is 12.4 divided by 12, and my N is 149, if you remember. Then what do we compute? We compute PMT plus 18 rand 20 cents. It will give us 2,247 rand 20 cents. Then after we can say a mod from here because the new annuity is having this installment. Plus minus 169,082.93 is my present value. 082.93 present value. 12.4 divided by 12 is the interest. 149 is N. We compute PMT. It says 2289.99. We say plus 18.20. Just like that. Don't touch your screen. Plus 18.20 equals. So that's what our PMT is. Then after we can say a mod under P2, we say 8 and we say enter. We say a mod. A mod. 8 equals a mod 8 that we get obviously will give us the same 165,000 that we calculated before 165,000 086.17 now we have calculated the balance now uh, before uh, there was a mist in our payments so this is the balance now at the end of the 39th payment what we calculated this is the balance at the end of the 39th payment of which the 39th payment uh, is the ninth payment in the new annuity 
remember 31 in the old then we have 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 this is one just want to make you very clear guys with this because it's very tricky this is the new payment the new annuity first payment the new annuity second third fourth fifth sixth seven eight so that is where this amount eight is coming from because this is the new annuity starting in month 32 so now we're starting saying one but we know the payment numbers they continue so that's why we said amount eight i just wanted to make you very clear guys with that so this is the balance after the 39th payment was made which is the 9th payment is the 8th payment before uh, the 4th the payment interest and admin fee was added so now we need to say this is the balance at the end of uh, the 39th payment so now what do we need to do we need to add interest and we need to add administration fee to get to the uh, balance now which is the balance uh, before the next payment was missed but since we know that uh, uh, 45 uh, up to 39 payments were missed then we can just continue uh, uh, calculating the future value now without having to uh, add the interest only for one month and that mean for one month we need to accumulate this amount uh, up until uh, the next uh, installment will be taking place because we know that 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, uh, 45, uh, we missed those payments. So now, meaning we're starting from 40 up to 45 payments we missed. So we can calculate the future value. Where now we take this as the present value, it will still accumulate interest, which is plus minus 165,000. And 86 rand 17 cents is our present value. Then we have interest. Our interest is 12.4 uh, divided by 12. And our end, remember, it is 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Meaning our end will be 6. It will be 45 minus uh, 39. Because we started missing from month number 40. Then what are we looking for? We are looking for the future value. Remember, there's another way to calculate this. You don't have to use this um, uh, method of the future value, but this is the one that I prefer. You can use a formula where you say sum accumulated is equal to 165,000, open brackets, 1 plus 0 0.124, and you divide here by 12. Don't forget that. And to the power of uh, 6, then this will still give you the future value. I just want to be consistent just with the calculations. So now, whichever you do, you still get to the uh, same numbers. So plus minus 165,000, 086.17 is my present value. 12.4 divided by 12 is my interest. 6 is my N, and I compute the future value. I get 170. 5,589, 589 rand, 60 cents. So either way, if you use this approach of the future value, then you'll still be getting to the same answer. So this is the future value at the end of month 45, which is end month 45. End of month 45. This is the future value uh, that we have. Now that we have this future value end of month 45, we need not to be ignorant of the fact that there were administration fee that uh, were added every month. So now we need to calculate also the future value of the administration fee, not only of the amount that we have. So now we have administration fee of 18 rand 20 cents, remember, plus minus 18 rand 20 cents. Uh, which is our PMT in terms of the administration fee or those admin fee are added at the end of every month and they are accumulating interest of how much 12.4 divided by 12 which is our interest and N for this administration fee is still 6 
So now we need to compute the future value for this administration fees. Compute future value. Because remember admin fees are added each and every month. Each and every month they are added. So now if this person does not pay them, then they will accumulate interest. Plus minus 18 rand 20 cents. That is the um, uh, PMT. 6 is N. 12.4 uh, divided by 12 is the interest. Then we compute our future value of the administration fee. And it is 1,000. It is 112 rent, sorry, uh, 6 cents. So now this is what will be now in the account uh, at the end of this period. So now meaning now the balance that we are going to have will be a sum of 175,589.60 plus 1012 rent 6 cents then let us uh, look at that 175,589 rent 60 cents plus 1012 rent uh, 6 cents then the balance that is in the account before the next payment is 175,761 rand 66 cents so this is the future value at the end of the six missed payment now what are we going to do from now is to calculate now the new pmts that was the next question calculate the new pmts what do the new pmts increase to starting at the end of month 46 the loan is circled over the agreed period now remember we have missed these payments and our new term was 149 have that at the back of your mind our new term was uh, 149 but we know that the total term was a, a, a sum of 180 that was our total term now that we know that uh, our total term was 180 and we missed or in fact we paid uh, up to payment number 39 and now we want to continue from payment number uh, 46, meaning we're excluding payment number 45. In other words, we are saying out of 180, we minus 45 because we want to start at payment number uh, 46. If you see the, uh, the, 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 the instruction, we want to start at payment number 46. How many months in total was 180 minus 45? So now we need to know how many how much it will be the amounts of the remaining payments if you want to keep the term remember they said to cycle over the agreed term that is why now uh, we don't just say uh, 149 if we say 149 i'll still show you how that can still remain uh, the same so 180 minus 45 how much do we get we get 135 if we say 149 we need to deduct uh, eight we need to deduct um we need to deduct will it be 8 135 minus 149 we will need to deduct 14 which is from the month of uh we we'll need to deduct 14 where we starting now from the month of april up until remember april was the 30 uh 30 32nd payment or not april april was the 30 uh let's just verify that April was was the month in which the interest rate increased. So this was April. It was the thirty uh, uh, first, thirty second payment. So now we'll have to start from there up until uh, the thirty ninth payment. But that is not uh, much or important for you to use that approach. So now preferable just say because we want to maintain the term one eighty minus the payments that have already been made up to forty five. Then how much is the remainder? Remember. The remainder is 135. So now that is why we say 180 um, minus 45 because we want to start in the 46th. So the remaining months is 135. So now if the remaining months are 135, then uh, that is very simple. We need to calculate how much now will be uh, the amounts of the new payments that we will be making. We are very clear. 
we know how much is the balance. There is the balance, our current present value now. We have plus minus 110.75,000. is our present value. Uh, the interest has not changed, still 12.4 divided by 12. Our N is 135, which is 180 total period minus 45, including the missed ones because you want to still maintain the remaining months, which is 135, meaning keep the agreed period. Then what are we calculating? We're calculating PMT. Remember PMT, we must always say plus the administration fee. So now if we do that, we need to verify how much will be our PMTs. Plus minus 175,000. 701.66 is the present value. 12.4 divided by 12 is the interest. 135 is uh, my N. What am I looking for? I'm looking for PMT. First of all, my PMT that I get, I want to highlight that PMT that I get, it is 2,410.19.53 cents. That is what I get. So now in this PMT, I need to add my administration fee, 18.20 cents. So plus 18.20 cents. I get my PMT as 2,437.73 cents. So this is the amount of the PMT that will increase to this amount because we missed six payments from month number 40 to month number 45. So now this is another very important part. We're going to the last one, already one hour, 36 minutes, but a very important uh, knowledge to master. It says a further amount of 25,000 was borrowed against the loan on the first of the second month in the year 2006. Now, very important to master again, calculate the amount of the new payments. Remember, we have a new annuity that has not changed. New annuity started in the month of April. So from April up until December, let us calculate the number of months. It will be April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. April up until December, it is nine months. Obviously, this started on the 1st of February 2006, meaning we need to know the balance at the end of January. Because the amount was 25,000 was borrowed uh, on against the loan on the 1st of February. So we need the balance at the end of January. So obviously this is, remember, the year 2005. Now in the year 2006, uh, how many months? Only one month, which is January only. So January is quite one month. So we need a balance uh, after the 10th uh, payment was made. Meaning, remember, 10th payment uh, is a continuation of the previous one. But now we are focusing from April when there was change in the interest rate. So we need to say... Uh, a mod 10 because now up until December is 9 months, January 2006 where we are is 10 months. We need to get the balance after the uh, January payment was made so that we can add the amount that was borrowed then calculate now the new payments. Now let us do that. Remember now we have the new interest rate with the new annuity uh, where the amount of the PMT is 2247 so we need to go to our calculator again, recalculate this based on the balance that was there at the beginning of the current period, meaning before there was change in the interest rate in the month of April. I'm sure you still remember that one again. Now we need to recalculate that because I don't have uh, that one in my screen and either you definitely don't have that one because we previously calculated this uh, based on the fact that uh, there was some uh, missed payments uh, that uh, have, have taken place. Then now, uh, let us go there. We we'll say plus minus 169,000 and 82 rand is our present value. Remember, this is the big, the, the, this is the opening balance, opening balance of the new annuity. 
when there was change in the interest rate. So everything must always begin there because we are focusing now after the 31st payment. That's, that is where we are. The interest rate is equal to 12.4 divided by 12. Our N is equal to obviously 149. We just need to compute our PMT. We just need to compute our PMT. Whatever we get as our PMT, we need to say uh, compute PMT plus 18 rand 20 cents so that we get to the same PMT where we can amort 10 now. Second function alpha 00, zero to clear the screen minus 169,082 rand 93 cents is my present value. Present amount that I am owing before there was change in the interest rate, meaning before the new annuity, or at the beginning of the new annuity. 12.4 uh, divided by 12 is the interest. 149 is my N. Compute PMT plus 18.20. I get my PMT, and I don't claim my calculator, 2,247.20 cents. Uh, then after I say amort 10. AMRT 10, meaning what am I getting? I'm getting the balance after the 10th payment was made. I am getting the balance after the 10th payment was made. I thought I still have that calculation, but it's gone. I'm getting, yes, the balance after the 10th payment. Remember, the 10th payment is the payment of January. So that it become the opening balance of February. Then I add my loan in that balance. So hence I'm saying amort 10. Then I go to my amort. I press amort under P1. I scroll down P2. I say 10 and I say enter and I scroll down. I get 164,000 and 34,000.55. Then this is the balance after January payment was made, meaning beginning of February. Then I say plus 25,000 because more money was borrowed. Now, after 25,000 is added, let us see how much do we have. 25,000 was borrowed at the beginning of this balance plus 160, 4,034.55. This gives me 189,034.58. So now, what does this mean? It means I have now a balance at the uh, or after the loan was borrowed. Now that I have the balance after the loan was borrowed, then now uh, I need to say how much is or what is the requirement first of all. The question said, uh, calculate the amount of the new payments. Calculate the amount of the new payments. Calculate the amount of the new payments. I want to highlight the fact that, remember guys, we previously made 31 payments in the old annuity. We made 31 payments. Now, um, the month of April was the 32nd payment. And the month of December uh, was, the, uh, 30, was the 40th payment. We know December was the 40th payment, 32, 33, 34, up to 40. So January is the... 41st payment. Let me just verify that if it's the 41st payment, we had April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. Now we do have this December, January. This is 30. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. So now these are the payments that we made, meaning April was the 32nd payment. Let us just verify that April was really the 32nd payment. Uh, there we do have the fourth month which is April, April, 
April was really the 32nd month. So now uh, we have all these payments. Hence now we set a mod 10. Now the requirement is to calculate uh, is to calculate the amount of the new payments. Now if you're calculating the amount of the new payments, what need to come into your mind, remember, uh, this is at the beginning of January. Now when we continue with the payments, obviously, of beginning of February, sorry, this will be a payment of February. We start, we continue with the payments in February. We borrowed money at the beginning of February, then at the end of February, a payment will take place. Now that means we will make payments um, we will pay here because there's no payment missed in January, which is supposed to be the the uh, the, the forty first payment. So now it means uh, we have made how many forty payments, and we borrowed money at the beginning of the forty first payment of the of the forty first month. So now meaning we need to include January as a month of payment, meaning our end now will be a difference of 108 because we want to maintain the period minus 40 because we continue with the payments but our payments will change on the 41st payment why because february is the 41st payment and february is after 20 25000 was borrowed so the payments from february will ne definitely have to change that is why now we need to include uh, Feb uh sorry uh, february which is um sorry uh, February, yes. December, this is not February. In fact, let me just verify that this is 41. Oh, well, we don't include January, we include February. So, January in this case will be taken into account. So, we will have made payment for January. It's only February that need to be taken into account. So, that is why, yeah. So, that one is not right at all. It is 180 minus uh, 40. It is 180 minus 41. So now we start making the payment uh, in a uh, 42nd payment because January, we have made a payment already in January. That is why we said amount 10, we included January as a payment. Then the borrowing of 25,000 took place at the beginning of February. So we start starting in February. Uh, sorry for that one. I think my brain is uh, quite uh, tired now as I'm closing. Now, uh, we are calculating now the amounts that will be paid plus minus 189,000 and 34.58 is my present value interest is 12.4 divided by 12 and my n is equal to 180 minus 41 because 41 payments are made i want to know uh, from the 42nd payment 180 minus 41 remember 41 is january and we did make a payment in the month of january it's only february when our payments will be at the changed uh, payment because we borrowed more money then we compute our pmt plus 18 rand 20 cents then now we say in our calculator don't forget to clear the screen or the clear the memory second function alpha zero zero plus minus 189,000 and 34 rands 58 cents and 55 cents is it 55 or 58 uh, it is 55 cents not 58, 55 cents, uh, that is 55 cents is my present value, 12.4 divided by 12 is the interest, 139 is my N, and I'm looking for the PMTs plus 1820 cents, I get 2,586 rand. 91 cents i get 2586 rands 91 cents remember before that it was 
1820 cents it was 2,510.68.71 then I added my administration fee of 1820 cents so that's how I got this amount with that guys yeah I've tried to squeeze the time as much as I can but I just could not because this statement I know is very challenging uh, to analyze very important to master guys everything that you have said i was i almost confused you in there i think the mind is very tired uh, focusing and analyzing all this throughout without any break in between trying to make sure that you understand very important to master that uh, the month of uh, january we did make a payment in january so that is why in there we need to put january the foot first payment so that we only say 180 minus 41 we start in month number 42, calculating uh, PMTs. With that, guys, you've been wonderful. You've been awesome. Thank you for watching up until this end, if you did manage. Yeah, any questions you have, please uh, don't uh, bother to ask me. And the statement is important also at second year level. With that, guys, thank you very much.